Welcome to Playmakers, everyone. I'm your host, Haley Elwood, and we are continuing our Women's History Month series with our very special guest today, Monique Boone. Monique is the varsity defensive line coach and assistant varsity offensive line coach at Hawthorne High School here in LA. She is the first woman to coach at Hawthorne. She is the first female coach in their school district, and she's also coming off attending the NFL Women's Careers in Football Forum. She's here to talk about all of that, so let's get to it. Let's welcome in Monique Boone. Monique, Coach Boone, how are you? Thank you for coming on. I'm great. Thank you for having me. I'm I'm excited. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, it is so exciting to talk to women who are coaching, and we will get to that in a little bit. But the magnitude of everything. You are the first woman to coach at Hawthorne High School. You're the first woman to coach in their school district. Right. What does that mean to you? Uh, for me, honestly, it's such an honor um, right now, and at this point a little surreal um because i am the first one but i'm you know i was thinking you know for athletic directors and for other clubs out there from high school to ncaa to nfl it widens the pool so mm -hmm. much of who they can look for in coaching um, and that women have been out here playing and, and, and learning the game so much that they can feel a lot comfortable saying, okay, I want to add a woman to my staff to get a different perspective, um, which I hear a lot from hiring coaches and things like that. They, they want something new, something different on their, on their squad. Yeah. And I think we hear that all the time, diversity, inclusion, look, teams are usually microcosms of society and now they're reflecting that in other areas, specifically with gender. Where did your love of football really come from? Uh, you know, growing up, I lived in Detroit. My dad and I would go to uh, the Lions games um, and total side note, uh, hearing from uh, Miss Sheila Fordham yeah. during the forum was it just brought me back to childhood and I was like, here she, you know, I know she wasn't owning at the time, but still her family was, uh, but anyway, to from childhood, my dad was a running back in, uh, at Hampton university. So football has always been a part of the family and been more of a fan perspective. So then when I was able to play myself and be a player that it changed my outlook of, I want to have football always in my life. And I mm -hmm. want to continue to grow in this sport. Why was playing the game? Why was being a player so important to you? Because not everyone goes that route, but you look at someone like Sam Rappaport at the league office. She certainly did. But for you personally, why was it important to do that? It was important to me. I had just moved uh, to Southern California 15 years ago okay. and I didn't have a home yet. I had lived on the East coast my entire life. And when I found football, when I found tryouts and was able to find a, a team to play on, the field became a home away from home. And for me now, my goal is to kind of create that same experience for future women, future men also at this point, uh, to say when you step on the field that it's a home to you, that it's such a comfortable feeling um, that you can't wait to get out there and be out there. What positions did you play? Um, so, <laughs> so I started as a defensive end and defensive okay. tackle. That was at the beginning of my career. Um, and now I play specifically left guard on the offensive line. So I am in the trenches, offensive line, defensive line. That's home for me. That is home. And hey, that's what you are coaching at Hawthorne. I actually caught up with their head coach, Corey Thedford. And he said that what sets you apart is your football IQ and that really hiring you was one of the easiest decisions he had to make. What was that interview process like? Why did you want to get into coaching? Uh, so for, I've been playing football for the last 12 years and football, it, it's a wear and tear on the body. There, yeah. There's no <laughs> escaping that, especially being in the trenches. It's every day, every, every play you're hitting something. Yep. Somebody. So um, I know that playing is limited and but I still want to have football. So it was 
this progression and transition into coaching that I knew that I wanted to get into and wanted to uh, have. So for the hiring process for Hawthorne, my head coach for my women's team became the offensive line coach for Hawthorne. Okay. And so when Coach Thepper, the head coach, asked uh, Bobby Patterson, he asked, who do you want to bring along with you? He thought of me immediately and he called and he sent me a text and he was like, hey, I have this job and I'm offering this to you. You need to interview. And I said, okay. Let's <laughs> there, do was it. No, there was no hesitation. I yeah. said, okay. Um, and then I met with Coach Thetford on, you know, did it via phone. And we, I want to say it was an hour and a half of talking football. That's all we did mm-hmm. was just talk offensive line. We talked inside run, uh, off tackle, swings, uh, different plays, power, so on and so forth. Hour and a half of just talking football. And then from there, that, that was it. So. so just, it felt like a good connection. It felt like, hey, you know, it was the right thing in the moment and you guys just kind of talked ball and, and that was really it. Did you get a call yeah. shortly afterwards? Did you, did you leave thinking you had it nailed? Uh, no, he told me at the okay. end of it. Yeah, Perfect. there was no... <laughs> He, you know, he, my, my head coach and offensive line coach, uh, he talked me up and hyped me up and he, and so coach Thepfer was like, I needed to know for myself if you were real. And he was like, you were real and you, and you have a clear vision. You fit into what Hawthorne is trying to do. Um, Hawthorne is building culture, building, bringing back a foundation of, football back to the high school and he's like that's who you exemplify this is how you you're reflecting what we want for Hawthorne when you talk about coach Thedford you talk about your uh former head coach now off that offensive line coach there we hear a lot about men being allies for women in this industry and sort of taking it upon themselves to you know pave the way to bring women on but what can you say about those guys and being able to really now show that I think for them specific, specific, uh, specifically um, that they had, they saw women actually play. They saw, I mean, our head coach coached us for three years. Um, he, and also coached that for seeing that film. It, I believe what I've said before, it gave a comfort of knowing that women are respecting the game, women are learning the game um, and that for say working with high schoolers at, at this point, it gives them in a way a comfort of, and a different perspective of, okay, how do I teach this? Because for a lot of women, they're, they don't have football experience until they're in their twenties or thirties um, and they're starting a new game. So like coach Lori Locus, she didn't start till she was, I think 42. So, mm-hmm. you know, you, you come into a, into a space where you're just learning and for high school, they're just learning. And so I had the experience to say, I took a person that didn't know anything about football to here we are playing in the game, playing in playoffs to championships, so on and so forth. I think that's a really good perspective that you bring up in that sense. And I think when you look at the game of football now, particularly with women, with girls flag, they're starting it younger. They're getting more girls involved at a younger age now, but what is maybe some advice you have for women who might want to get into coaching, maybe didn't play, but really love the game and envision themselves maybe having a role on a sideline? Honestly, I, I would start finding a mentor, finding someone that you look up to. It could be a head coach. It could be an assistant coach for a position. Um, it could even be the athletic director who's really into football. Um, It's finding someone that you trust and that is wanting to help you learn um, and and lead, but still see you as a partner uh, in football. Yeah. When it comes to qualities of a good coach, 
that's something that doesn't have a gender assigned to it. But for you, you talked about working with high school students. Now, what are some good qualities that maybe you've seen in coaches you've had that now you emulate on the field? Um, for me, it's consistency. It's about a coach that meets a player where they are and builds them up to a, a player that is exceeding and succeeding on the field. Um, I, in college, I was a lacrosse player. I was D3. Okay. Uh, I, was, I was a lacrosse goalie, um, all-star and many other accolades. <laughs> and we won the championship four years in a row. And in our conference, we had won 14 years in a row conference. Wow. Wise. Yeah. So lots of legacy here. Um, so yeah, so consistency, meeting players where they are and also trust and that players feel safe to come to their coaches, especially with hard, with, uh, hard uh life events because mm -hmm. even though football is safe sometimes it's an escape from real life yeah. and real life spills into the football field and i think for players to have that trust with coaches to work through those life events i think that's really uh it's magical in a way uh and to build that trust in yeah well, you mentioned that word mentorship before. Is that also kind of how you approach it a little bit? Yes, definitely. I try to, in a way, partner with my players and mm -hmm. partner with other coaches. Um, I also have played internationally, played in several different countries. So in, in an all-star or all-star format. So it's like two days of practice, 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 and then we play a game. Yeah. Um, and so you're meeting a lot of different coaches, you're, you're learning different schemes and new playbooks every single time. <laughs> um, so it's really learning how to build a rapport with other coaches uh, and to find mentors in that. And so I have several, I have several mentors that, uh, and they're women coaches. They've been coaching, playing for 25 years plus. Yeah. yeah. yeah so um, that's, they helped me find my love of coaching and gave me the confidence to say, okay, you know, I can do this. I, I, I have something special here. Yeah. That's very cool. Mm -hmm. So you were recently coming off of attending the NFL women's careers in football forum. It was the fifth annual forum. We were talking offline and I was saying I attended day one just from the back end. And when I was looking at all the participants, I was so excited when I saw someone from LA, from Southern California, who is actively coaching at the high school level. But just what was it like to participate in that forum this year? This year, I, you know, I saw it as a networking football boot camp. Yeah. Like, you know, there's 40 women that were selected and invited to the event. You were, it's five hours each day and it's, you're meeting so many people from owners to ge general managers, to coaches, to equipment managers, to data analysis, like, and, and football operations, so on and so forth. So you're meeting so many people that you're just like, okay, I'm, I, I need to do this. And you're taking so many notes. I, I literally have like 20 pages of notes <laughs> <laughs> from the forum. <laughs> and it was, it was an experience that I, I can't really describe in words because mm -hmm. it's definitely put me in a place where, wow, like it's so much bigger. Like here I, I coach in Hawthorne, but it's so much bigger and I want to be a part of that. I think it was really cool. I actually had Vanessa Hutchinson on a couple of uh, weeks ago, or actually it will air at this point a week before yours. And she talked about how this format, it was virtual, but there were so many different types of women who attend this forum, whether it's women like you who are into coaching, whether it's women who want to get in on the front, um, front office side, the business side of things. But she had mentioned that everyone who came in had to come in in a way to stand out. Because look, you're doing this on Zoom, just like we are right now. You're doing it virtually. 
you specifically asked Bill Belichick and Mike Vrabel to break down your game tape. How cool was it to get their reactions on that? Did that sort of come to you or did you kind of go in knowing, hey, I got some tape. I'm going to ask these guys to break it down. Well, it, I, in a way for the networking, it's you're not just networking with the higher ups of NFL and NCAA. You're also uh, networking with 39 other yeah. amazing women across the country. Um, so uh, a great coach out of Oberlin, uh, Alex Hanna, she had actually started talking about the X's and O's and started talking about defense. And I mentioned something about offense because I was the only, really the only person in the room that was an offensive focus or, or so. Mm -hmm. And so we started talking about started talking about the offensive line and, and inside run. And for Coach Rabel, Tennessee Titans, he, well, Chris Henry is an inside, inside run guy. So, uh, and then it just kind of evolved nat or an organic yeah. uh, conversation of saying, hey, let's, you know, let's go further and let's talk of film and talk about how do we run this better or how can we improve on what we already are doing. That's pretty cool. Why would you recommend the forum to women for future sessions who might want to be part of it? Honestly, it's a chance to, because most people, we don't have time to just sit and if football isn't our career, it's hard to find time to just say, I'm going to sit for one hour, two hours, a whole day, only focused on this, only focused on football. And for the forum, you're connecting with so many people that say, yes, my, my love is coaching and I want it coaching, but I learned so much about football, like more about football operations as well. Yeah. And I don't think I would have had that opportunity, honestly, if it wasn't for the forum. Um, and the way that the forums ran, Sam and Vanessa uh, and Andy and everyone else connected to it, it's it's just like a well operated machine. It's they've have they have found the the right code and and to say how do we put women in the best situation and how do, and they can succeed. And right now, even it's only been a couple of weeks since the forum, the women that have attended, they are thriving uh, from being offered jobs at like Texas Tech and Ohio. And there, there's so much movement out of that forum. It, it, you, you can't help but be excited. <laughs> yeah, no, that totally makes sense. And like you said, such a short amount of time too. Now movement for you, look, I know that the pandemic has stalled or did stall high school football here in Southern California this fall, mm -hmm. but Hawthorne is back practicing. How excited has it been to get back out there on the field? Uh, day one, I took a step on the field and just closed my eyes and just like let out sigh of relief. It's like we're here and we're back and to now see the boys in helmets and watching them get used to wearing a helmet. <laughs> it's, I can't help but to be excited. It's, it, and with that excitement, hopefully it's helping the boys to stay motivated, help us coaches stay motivated and to say, okay, yeah, we were dealt an interesting hand this year. Mm -hmm. uh, but here we are now, what do we do with it? And, Absolutely. And that's the best thing we can take as a, as a life-like lesson. What we have, here it is, what do we do with it now? Well, and in an honor, Monique, of you doing a really amazing things with the Hawthorne football program, as well as Hawthorne getting back out there, I wanted to let you know that the Los Angeles Chargers Impact Fund will be making a $1,000 donation to the Hawthorne Yay! football program. That's amazing. Congrats on doing just such, yeah, some really, really amazing things. We're so proud. It's so great to connect with you. And thanks for coming on as well. No, thank you for having me. This was great. Thank you.